All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, we are going to talk about China today. And so uh, not going to take too much time to talk about it, maybe about nine, ten minutes, probably like normal. Uh, the one thing you need to understand about China uh, is that China is 3.1 billion people, and that's billion. That is half the world's population. So uh, it's extremely crowded. Uh, it is so crowded, in fact, and there were there are so many people that uh, the Chinese in 1979 enacted the one-child policy, and you can watch that video, and that tells you everything you need to know about the one-child policy, except that uh, with 3.1 billion people, it's uh, the cities are extremely polluted, the cities are extremely crowded, and you get situations like COVID-19. Uh, that happen frequently. Most of the major diseases that we see in the world, uh, most of the major pandemics have all come from China. Uh, you've got the Black Death, you've got COVID-19, you've got SARS, you've got MERS. Uh, you know, you've got those uh, diseases that have all started in China. And where you have a lot of people, you inevitably have outbreaks of disease. Uh, most of the people in China live in the East, most of the people in China live in the east because the major rivers are there. So you've got the Yangtze, you've got uh, the Yellow River. In the west, you have the deserts. So not too many people want to live in the west with the desert, but you have one of the most dangerous deserts in the world called the Gobi. Uh, it is 2,000 miles of absolutely nothing. And, and people rightly don't want to live out there. So most people choose uh, to live in eastern China near the rivers. And so consequently, the cities in eastern China are extremely overcrowded, extremely polluted. Uh, Shanghai, uh, for example, has days where they tell the population not to go outside, where uh, the air is so thick with pollutants and toxins that literally the air is red and that you have to wear a gas mask. Extremely polluted. Uh, China is also... And, and has been for for 40 or 50 years trying to enter the industrial age and trying to compete with the United States, which, which means that uh, they are building industry so fast that they don't have a lot of the, the safety standards that we have in the United States. And so like they're, and they're trying to compete and, and they are to a certain extent. And a lot of our companies have been moving to China. Because basically it's cheaper to work in China than it is here. So you've got all that. You've got the Yangtze River. You've got the Yellow River. You In eastern China, you've got the Gobi Desert. You've got the Tibetan Plateau. You, you know, you have all of this thing. So eastern half, you know, really nice water, grassland, forest. Western half, you don't have much of anything. Uh, the thing is, in the east, it floods a lot, and you get seasonal monsoons. Those are kind of like our, uh, our, I should say, hurricanes, you know, our thunderstorms, except that these thunderstorms tend to displace hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people, and so uh, the, uh, the Chiangzi River tends to, tends to flood. And the last time it flooded uh, in, a, in a major way was 1931, and it killed 4 million people. And that's a lot of people to kill. So what uh, ended up happening is that the government of China started something called the Three Gorges Dam. Now, they started building it in, I think it was the 20s, and then they had a major earthquake, and that kind of stopped things for a while. Then they started it again in the 30s. Then that flood happened and it kind of destroyed it. Then they started it again in the late 30s. And by that time, they were already involved in World War II. They were already involved with Japan. So nothing really happened for 20 years. River keeps flooding. River keeps killing people yearly. And then what happened in the 50s, 60s, and 70s is they really started building this dam. And... By the late 1990s, they finally got that dam built completely. Uh, what they had to do, though, is they had to displace 
almost a million people. Go to them and give them about two months to leave and tell them, hey, you know what? We're going to complete this dam. When we complete this dam, we're going to flood your town out. And don't give them the opportunity to uh, defile a grievance or anything. Just tell them to get their stuff and go. And so they left without any real idea of where they were going. And so when the government turned that dam on, uh, you know, it flooded out hundreds of these little towns and villages. Well, okay, that's the bad part. Now, the good part, of course, is that it keeps the floods to an absolute minimum. It controls the Changzi River, which is actually a really good thing. It provides electricity for uh, six or seven million people. Like, it's a, it's, a, it's a good portion of people, you know, in the area. Not to mention the people that in the other cities that get it, uh, that have fresh drinking water. And so uh, that's the benefit of that. So, you know, there's there's all of that. So, you know, with that, with that said, um, you know, China is a world player. China is trying to modernize. Uh, China is trying to compete with us. And it, it's any wonder that our, that our companies like Apple Computers are going over there. Uh, you know, there's a lot of issues with China. There's there's some kind of rumor going around that the Chinese have uh, have released this uh, COVID nineteen virus, and you know they accidentally released it. Apparently, you know, it's nobody really trusts the Chinese, but the Chinese economy is competing with us. And so, uh, you know, when you're when you're talking about that, sometimes money. The bottom line is more important than than who they are, and unfortunately, that that's very true with China and Russia. Uh, but you know, China, uh, you will you will see them and hear about them more and more and more as they get more powerful. They have one of the biggest militaries in the world. It's a uh, a what, a four million man army. So you know, look for them and. And we continue to get along with them despite the fact that they do things like accidentally release a virus or, uh, you know, something or other or continue to deny how many people have actually died in China as a result of this thing. It, you know, it's it's one of those things where, uh, you know, China has a long history of doing things like this. And, uh, and so they're there. Anyway, okay. So now now down to the business at hand. So um, I put it on the message board for you. Wednesday is a day that you may turn in any assignment that you have not done. So if you have been one of those people who have not been actively turning in work, tomorrow is your day. Get something done. For tomorrow, don't worry about the new stuff. If you have old stuff to turn in, turn that in. If you have new stuff and you know that you've turned everything in, then keep working on that. I will be here to answer your questions. I will be here, uh, like always, I will be available from 9 to 11 and from 1 to 3. Okay, so you'll see that little green light on there that says that I'm on and you should be able to find me. Okay, now... Uh, and one more thing for people that, you know, if you're if you're just getting to where you have internet or you were just getting to where you're doing assignments, again, go to posts. I always post. The work for this week is under 42720. Okay? All right, guys. Well, I miss you guys. I'm sorry we won't get to see each other again this year, but we will see each other next year. And uh God bless you. Hope you have a good day. Uh, let me know if you have any problems. Some of you have been really good about texting me your assignments, and if you have problems, let me know. All right, guys. Bye-bye. God bless.